tough for Cloud9, but if they can hold it to late, and if LGD make their mistakes, you have to say Cloud9 have the late Prepare game. Yeah. They have the great lockdown supports. They've got an Ember where there's really not much to gank him with once he gets his ultimate and some items online. And with that being said, Sin, it's just about time. Game three of Cloud9 versus LGD. Welcome in, everybody, from the multicast. This is your deciding game three of Cloud9 versus LGD Gaming. LGD, they started off the International Four on a horrible foot. They qualified from the China qualifier, but then it looked like they might be almost eliminated after day one. They had a really poor showing. I believe Owen and four in their first four games. They clawed their way back. They made it through the tiebreakers. It was a grueling road, and now they find themselves with one game win here. They would move on to play DK and have a shot at starting in the winner's bracket. Cloud9 on the other on the other side. They had an easier run and a better performance through the group stage, but now backs against the wall. Let's see if they can turn the tides. I'm LD, and I'm joined here by Cinder. And Sind, and we go. Yeah, we. The, the analysis we did, which of course the people on uh, on Twitch will not have heard, what we talked about inside Dota TV was, so Cloud9 have a good stalling strategy. They have Fissure, they have the Shadow Shaman wards to stall with, they have Slide of Fist, and generally they just want to aim for the late game, which is why the Lone Druid pick from LGD in this game was absolutely amazing, because if there's one thing Cloud9 will struggle to defend against, it's one single target that deals the a lot of damage begins. to towers. Since they have so much spread damage, but not so much single target, the Lone Druid pickup was absolutely amazing. and. As far as the lanes go, it looks like an interesting choice for LGD, so let's have a look at that. We've got Lin in the top lane playing as the Razor. As it looks now, a dual lane mid with Lone Druid by Rabbit and DD on the Tran. He's going to leave him alone. He just helped him blocking. And already a DDC, smoke. DDC, Witch Doctor, they're going to smoke up together. And finally, Yao in the off lane on the bro. AUI actually has boots, so he may be able to reveal this one and get out safely. Or, if he gets caught, the tree... No, no boots on DD. This is going to be a tough kill on AUI. He wants to backstab. They want to give Sing Sing a powerful start, but if they go in, this is going to be trouble. AUI about to be caught out. The smoke's revealed, and he walks right into the waiting arms. Now the follow-up comes. The bear arrives, and AUI 2000 it will be your first blood of Game 3. Uh, what an unfortunate path for him to... What a prediction from LGD to go for that play. They had the expectation, okay, if we're running a lone druid mid, it's generally considered one of the easiest targets to gank, so Cloud9 will definitely try to do that early on, and they just get a great turnaround kill immediately here, baiting out Aoi and securing themselves a great start. Well, with that being said, LGD, they're going to have a decent matchup here in the mid lane. If the Ember's not getting kills, you have to say Lone Druid should get pretty good farm. You look towards the off lane, they will be going aggressive trying with the Brew, and not really the best lockdown here. So most likely Eternal Envy won't die, but his farm should be a bit limited. Looking top, we'll have Lin on the Razor, and, well, they're rotating in, but a great Observer Ward spots up these early movements. And if you're moving early, oh, Envy, caught out, the cast, not enough, but the harassment is there, and they descend on top. They look for Lin, they've got the shackles, and in comes Bone7, starts slicing him a bit with the sword, the Fissure follows it up, and Cloud9 in the end do get the kill. Very nice despite kill. Despite the That's Observer nice. Ward. Yeah, he knew, he knew Shadow Shaman was on his way in, but he, he was like, they, there's no way they can kill me, and then, oh, wait. Shaker actually suddenly TP'd in on the lane at 1 minute and 30 seconds and actually sets up a kill here. So, great rotation from Pylite Eye. And important, especially to help out the top lane where Bone 7 Razor will crush Doom in lane. But now, he got a little bit of help. Should be doing alright. And AUI again comes through mid. This movement was initially spotted by the Dire Observer, but who knows if they saw and predicted the end of the dive. In they go again. The Fissure's here. Are there any TPs available? None. And so Xiao Tuji gets surrounded. Corralled, pulled in now by the Shackles while Pi takes the tower. Sing Sing, the last hit actually going to AUI. That'll mean, well, the makings of his Arcane Boots if he wants them. At least that upgraded Courier. And the Lone Druid, the, really the Dyer's engine of the push being slowed down attack. here in game number three. Another great kill here. And speaking of the top lane where Racer should be defeating the uh, the Doom, in bottom lane, kind of the same story. Weaver will generally be beating melee heroes in the lane. He's currently 10 and 2 against the 8 and 2 of Yao, who of course got helped by the supports, which is why it's pretty even. But overall, across the board, the lanes are, are fairly even. I think mid is going to be an even matchup. And in terms of the sides, both teams have their advantages in the safe lanes. And they're going to go again top, perhaps. They've rotated in three. And the Fissure's ready. AUI has been spotted once again by that Observer Ward, but Lin, he played up, and he's gonna play up again. In fact, he walks in, they see AUI, the Fissure's there, but the Shackles hold him in place. Will the Living Armor be enough? Doesn't look like it. Pops the Plasma Field, another death for the Razor, perhaps? One more right click securing the kill. They do get the trade, but well worth it to bring that Razor down again. Yeah, LGD misestimating, or underestimating, I should say, the damage of, uh, of Cloud9. They thought they could get away with that. You saw the plan 
from the uh, from the rotation was that they would be able to get Shadow Shaman with the bait, which they were able to, but Razor just not enough health. He was a little bit short. And because of that, Cloud9, another big kill in the top lane. Now Razor the is going to go in here. on Bone 7. The cask is not going to bounce. There's no mana, actually, oh, for the Leech Seed. I think he's off. Just clipping him with the Plasma Just kidding, kill. not even close to living. If they didn't get that, that would be a real problem. While the smoke comes through mid, AUI and Pi wrapping around on the Shaltuji. And the Fissure Block, oh, if he gets caught by this, he's done for. Oh, it didn't it land. doesn't even connect. They need that damage, maybe. Sing Sing does go in with the chains, but there's a cast that can come through, and this might buy time. He's being burnt down by the Ember. He needs an Drop entangle low. right now. He salves no, up. He he's going to live. The turn can come. Sing Sing not level 6 yet. Oh, is there going to be mana for a Leech Seed? Doesn't have it. Now from the high crowd, they go in with the Shackles. They hold Rabbit off and... Trialing mid. Well, six, 6 heroes mid, but no kills forthcoming. So, I think the other thing, Sin, which we haven't really discussed, this Weaver was initially getting tri-lane, but after all the early pressure top, they've been forced to move the tri-lane off the bottom lane, which gives Envy a lot more room to breathe, despite the, the early pressure. He's sitting, even with the Brute, 20 and 3. Very good comeback from Envy. Radiant's middle tower and he, knowing under Envy, attack. he loves playing a very aggressive Weaver in the lane, so he's not afraid of trading blows with this Brewmaster and will just... <gasps> Okay, those not, crits hurt. Not, not trade good blows, right? That's, there. that's not very <laughs> aggressive. That's just masochistic. Comes in, takes a clap, and then says, "You know what? Why don't you smack me, smack me in the face as well while you're at it?" What's he flying out? A bottle. This is not a Midas game for Envy, and I agree with that choice. I think it's going to be too late, and I think he's under too much pressure to go for a Midas here. They need early impact items so that they can build up for a late game. If they go greed, I think they get run over. I would be. I think C9 should definitely not be getting any Midas's in this game, also not in the offlane Doom, and it looks like indeed Bone7 will not. At least for now he's going Bottle, Tranquils, and Orb of Venom. If they want to go back for a Midas after securing some kills, I think it's okay, but just going straight into them, like you said, is probably too greedy. Here comes the wraparound. DD, DDC, grouped up together. There's two here right now. I don't know if it's enough. Doom comes out on Lin. The follow-up is here, and the cast begins to bounce, but the Fissure's out, and it blocks DD and DDC away. Lin now being pursued out a bit by Bone7, but Lin stands his ground. Now he decides he doesn't want to stand his ground. DD gets, walks into the tree. I got Actually, two crits in a row. Oh, the crits are strong, and the passing from DD, really not the best there. The trees ended up getting in his way, and he keeps on chopping. That was such a big deal for Bone7 there that the... Oh, here it. comes Sing, out of nowhere. They find their follow-up. DDC will go down. DD... Will also fall. I'm, I'm a little or surprised. Will be back, I should How say. did Lin not get static link off on the Doom when they opened that fight? I don't think he. I think he Radiant's thought Cloud9 were just going to run. To be honest. Attack. Yeah. Well, why didn't you? Why wouldn't you link anyway? I don't know. That would have changed that fight around completely. I think they wouldn't have had a casualty. They would have killed Bone instead, and now they ended up dying too. So, I'm not sure if Bone was just quick or if it was a misclick or if the link was on cooldown or something. But that seemed like a little bit of a weird play from from LGD there, and Cloud9 really making the most of that, securing themselves two kills. Oh, Cloud9 on the brink of being thrust down into the lower bracket. They now have a shot to to move on and, and face DK to wrap up our day, our first day of the bubble races. LGD moved through the mid lane. Remember, they still have this push to come. We haven't seen it yet, but Chao Tuji, well, he's sitting on 1,400 gold. Anything on the courier for him? No, nothing doing yet. What do you think the build is going to be? Do you look towards the Radiance, or is this more of just your, your Maelstrom Assault Caress type of game? I even even the Medic Bear we've seen at times. Mech or Pipe, maybe not your first item, but can be your second. You want the Mech on the on the Razor in this game, I think. Okay. It's, it's better for that, but overall... If you're alone druid in this game, I think you wait. You see what happens over the next five minutes. If you get great farm, go for the Radiance. If you get crippled, you get ganked a couple of times. Maybe you fall back for the uh, for the Maelstrom. But the problem is the game plan for LGD, the Maelstrom is not half as good as the Radiance is for the base siege. Yeah. They want the passive pressure to be applied constantly, so Cloud9 have to fight into a Radiance instead of fighting into a Maelstrom. And if he doesn't manage to get that, it's a big blow to the LGD strategy, actually. For now, they've rotated three top. They're going to... Put Rabbit in this lane, probably the easiest one for Cloud9 to dive, and he's the most difficult hero to kill. Panda split online, the blink coming soon, and it looks to be a blink rush. No arcane boots picked up, and given the way this early game is gone, they may just opt to skip it. He can TP in here if he needs to, and that's right as Cloud9, poking their heads around the trees. This Earthshaker, just a snout around the corner. Not going in yet, but looking for the opening. You really don't want to go on the bear here. and Not going to do it. They've showed the Shaman mid as well, and, and that's where LGD say, there's definitely something not right in this top lane. My main concern for Cloud9 right now is they've got some kills, which is great, but where's the farm? Weaver is getting good farm. Sing Sing 24 CS in an 8-minute game after he got a kill and an assist. 
He got a kill mid and an assist top. He needs to keep the farm going. If they want to defend this, he has to get up his levels. And he has to get... So he gets the level 4 slide of fist for defense. And so he can carry on later on. There's a ramp on mid and now DD gets isolated. With the Fissure coming through with burn damage, it's just not going to matter that he has living armor. Instantly dealt with. And Sing Sing's rotations, they continue to pay off. They're actually doing pretty well for gold sims. Despite the CS not being incredible. They do have Devour, and they've got kills. Three on Bone he 7. actually went for a Midas on Envy. I I think one is okay, but any more is, could spell their doom. This completely depends on when Rabbit gets the Radiance on the Lone Druid, I feel. If, if he gets a, uh, a Radiance at about 15 minutes on the bear, Envy's going to regret getting this Midas, I'm pretty sure. He, he will not have a high teamfight impact for the next at least 10 minutes on the Weaver now. Whereas Rabbit can come online very soon. It's it's a gamble from Envy. It's a ballsy play. If it works out, it's great, but... And, well, speaking of LGD getting the Radiance online, they're going to have the Blink Dagger now. So, if they really want to... Oh, Lin. Being toast by Sing Sing mid. Not a kill Sing Sing wants to go for on his own. But they're going to have the, the Brewmaster split to try and force towers. And that's what we see now. The rotation up towards top. Bone 7. No lane ward here to spot him. Looks like he will make it out for now. But can Cloud9 defend this? Earthshaker, the main one who can. TP's at the ready, but he's not in position for this tower. And the monocle is quite low. And in they go. Straight on the bone. They're going to pop the primal split for this. Bone 7, he's got Doom, but it really won't oh, help him. Then the, the root. root. That secures the kill. Is there a trade? Radiance is there any sort of trade for Cloud9? Not finding it yet. Radiance so classic LGD to make this exact play right now. Use the split, secure the tower, get farm on the bear. And like you say, the trade for Cloud9 might Dyer's come bottom. bottom There's a glyph, though, attack. and they can send in quite a few heroes if they want to defend this. Sing Sing's the first one in. Radiance top tower is under but he attack. finds the Razor, and already the Living Armor comes out. They'll Plasma Shield to slow down this push. They hold strong in the bottom lane. In fact, they go in, but this might be a bit too far from Lin. He needs some backup, and Radiance it has come. So they take fallen. a tower, they give nothing in return. It's now Cloud9's turn. If they want to go for something, they want to do it while the split is down. That gives them 95 seconds to make a move. This is going to be a really early Radiance LD. It's 11 minutes in and he has 3,300 gold on the bear. I'm starting to worry for Cloud9 already for this game. Y yes, they've got some kills and it's all looking okay for them because of that, but... When you factor in the Doom into the net worth and the fact that Doom wants to be ahead on gold, he's not far enough ahead, I think. And with all the all the inflow of gold coming LGD's way and experience and just their general teamfight lineup for breaking the base, it's always been the way with Cloud9. Dyer's middle tower just go greedy or go home. I mean, they, they really never play it more safely. Is that is that the right word? They they always try to get a little bit more off the map, and it's where they've, they've crushed teams where you think they don't have a chance. If it works out, it's explosive, but at times, they've gone a bit too greedy, one Midas too far, and it has cost them. Let's see. I think Sing Sing is good, and the Shadow Shaman. These are going to be two of the big heroes. Sing Sing can kill off enemy supports around the map and take the wheels off the push while Radiance AUI can just go for the trades. We've seen him very effectively split pushing with wards and, and maybe this is the game where he's got to step up. Let's see if he can do it. For now, he's going to rotate in top and they're going to smoke behind him. Bone7 and Sing Sing are rotating that way, but they're going to walk into the whole team. LGD are protecting the bear. They're not leaving Rabbit on his own. They may lose one mid. Lin, he's their mech builder, and he's getting close to it, and in they go. They start with the stomp, the blink's ready on the Doom, they follow it up with chain, and this will be the death of the Razor. A well executed gang, but they do not kill the lone druid, so still your relic is available. Yeah, he's buying it now, sending up the bear into Dyer's the shop. Middle tower they need more attack. time. I wonder how Dyer's he trains his bear to go and bargain with the shopkeeper. Like, where does he put the gold on the bear? Does he carry all the 3,800 gold in the mouth, and then it goes to the shopkeeper? Hey, I would like a radiance or a relic. He's got a big set. He just puts the items in the satchel, man. The bear just walks up and waits for the shop the shopkeeper to figure out what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> just stands there. You know what I want. You know what I want. <laughs> yeah. He says it in a system of growls. Maybe the shopkeepers just learn how to speak bear. I guess for the same, like how how would the courier negotiate? That's kind of hard. Well, the courier doesn't. Have, it's it's really just a robot. It's a mechanical mechanical. And trigger. it's also hard to bargain with the shopkeepers in this game. They're pretty adamant about what price they want for your items. You never get a discount. Never. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Actually, that's a great idea for a hero. What if there was one that had a discount? 
Items cost less bottom lane. They're looking for DD. They fissure blocked him out. And in comes the swarm while the dive goes through mid, but the overgrowth's here to turn this. So time lapse up high will TP immediately and makes his way out while Sing Sing holds the four mid. But only for so long with the relic. And remember, the other thing to keep in mind is there's living armor on LGD's side, and there's not on Cloud9. So tower trades are gonna be easier for them than it is in most games. You see AUI still trying to pressure top, but the mid-tier one will fall. Radiance and with this, the Radiant Mayor even got soon. it. 500 gold for the Radiance. We're putting a lot of emphasis on this, but it's what the entire LGD strategy is built around here. This is big, Sin. This tower was down to about 80 health. And then the Living Armor comes out top, and AUI is denied. And if they keep on spamming it, he's never going to get it. It's already back up to 300 HP and counting. Yeah, it's a, it's a big problem for Cloud9 right now that they did try to put some pressure. Every time they try to trade towers, if they don't execute it completely, it's basically a waste of time that they could have spent farming. If they're playing for the late game anyway, it, of course it's tempting to try to get the tower trades, but it hasn't worked out for them so far. And while, while Doom is doing okay on the farm, I'm still going to fall back on the fact that Sing Sing has 40 CS in a 14-minute game. If you want to defend the base with your Ember Spirit coming in soon, the Radiance push will begin in, in just a few minutes. Sing Sing does not have Sleight of Fist yet. There's absolutely no way they're going to be able to defend this base against Bear. They're going to have to find pickoffs, and they're going for them now. But the Bear's the one they need, and they might actually find him. Shout Tuji, he's so close. Is he going to back off in time? He's already, well, not retreated fully, but getting close to a retreat. He's also near his tower, but he walks in just a little bit. That's going to open the way. They get the stomp. The Fissure comes through as well with a Doom here on top of it and a DD on Sing Sing. It's a recipe for success. The Radiance, he just got it. He just picked it up before he died but still at least they kill the druid. Uh, they buy themselves a little bit of time. Don't think they can convert it into anything bigger than that though. They'll try to get a little bit of collateral in the top lane by pushing, but getting that tower is probably going to be impossible at this point. Or if they do it, it's at the, at the cost of their own bottom tier one. Four LGD heroes are already in position. They start to push out. I'm imagining when Lone Druid respawns, they'll buy him a TP, he'll join the fight, or they'll go look for another lane and just defend top. At least for now, oh, they force out the glyph from C9. Maybe C9 managed to defend their tower here. That's a really big deal. They want to maintain map control and just buy time. I love these movements. They're sending Sing Sing and Bone 7 in top, while AUI drops his wards mid. So what you see is Cloud9 try to force heroes to separate. And now Rabbit gets caught out by two, but there's no Rabbit, or there's no uh, Doom this time, I should say. The stomp comes through, but the Brewmaster joins the Echo oh, Slam even thrown out. They can't quite kill off the bear. He jukes through the trees. If they get a root, this is going to be trouble for Pi. Oh, the, mech. the mech from Lin at the final hour, and now they'll lose him. Although the Doom looks like he will end up escaping. So in the end, it's actually not too bad for Cloud9. absolute ballsy TP coming in there from Rabbit. Going for that, he ported in willingly onto a Doom and a Shaker. And the help comes in from LGD in the last minute. Pretty much perfect calculation and timing there. Very impressive. The big problem for Cloud9 is they didn't take a tower. They didn't take the tower top. It's actually going to be healed up by Living Armor now. And although Envy tries to pressure bottom, I doubt he's taking this one either. It drops to about half. There's no glyph. Someone will have to come and defend. And if nobody does, then maybe it will fall. But they're not making tower trades up. Top lane, they've gone in on Sing Sing, but they just don't have the lockdown. Trying to kill this Ember is a fool's errand. An LGD. You got to imagine the push is coming soon, Sin. They have the Radiance, they have it's the Mech. Imminent. And the interesting There's thing about this game is it. that we're looking at the graphs, right? It's a 2,000 experience lead for C9. The gold is pretty much even, but we're still calling this a pretty significant LGD lead. It's just the way the strategy is tailored. As long as they're not behind right now... Dive goes through bottom. They are... Okay. Not going to be enough for, for DDC, but... Dive I think Cloud9 are playing tower. it right, though. They yeah, they're doing a pretty good job of not losing tower. They're, they're wasting time. They're forcing heroes to TP around the map. They're, they're forcing LGD to chase them instead of grouping up. And that buys them space. The bear trying to stall top lane, but does get pulled in by Sing Sing with the Searing Chains. And, well, it's just going to stand point, there and get some gold. At some point, they're going to go. But we haven't seen that. Might be able to kill yet. the bear here. Aoi's coming in as well. That could be a pretty big kill. They will get the first bear. There'll be a resummon from Rabbit, I imagine. Yeah, he does have the resummon, but that's 300 gold. That's something you really can't afford if you're LGD. You want those two bears for the push, especially once they get an Aegis. They're going to want to be able to siege as long as possible, and 
They just can't quite group every time they try to. Cloud9 applies pressure on the other side of the map. Yeah, they'll, they'll, Cloud9 will constantly split push with Doom in one lane, Weaver in one lane, and Ember in one lane. And two of those heroes are almost unkillable for LGD. That's one thing we talked about in the draft, too. It was a great Ember game because there was no counterpick. Uh, to as far as to just shutting him down you can shut down the strategy by pushing early Which is what LGD are trying, but they're not successful. So both Weaver and Ember can play fairly With a fair amount of confidence to be honest around this around this map right now and just put the pressure they want And if they keep spreading out LGD, I think every minute right now is a win for Cloud9 And Sing Sing is off buying some time. He's got a DD rune available. There's a mech here He just wants to force out rotations he knows he won't get this kill on his own, but with backup from AUI, perhaps he can Sing Sing. As soon as they see the TP, they back off and top lane, while Pi's been caught out, but they look to go for more. It looks like Pi's gonna fall. Sing Sing retreats out. Your Shadow Shaman, well, doesn't quite make it away. Pi, they immolate him with the bear. It's a painful death, but it buys space for Envy to push in the bottom lane. Not the best trade for Club. And but this might be the Roche opening for LGD. That's their first objective. The lanes are pretty well pushed out right now. They could perhaps even kill off Envy here in the bottom lane. Or there's at least no mana. Out. There's no mana, and there's going to be a dive. DD, no overgrowth available. He can't even go in Viz in time. And the Doom now follows this up. It's only on the Hero Bear, though. And this means the Spirit can run free. They actually drop a Sentry, and they look to go. They clap him down. Envy, he just couldn't get out in time. No time lapse. And now with Doom used. This, but this but here when, comes top. Yeah. Their ward's ready on AUI. This is tough, even when they're getting these kills, it isn't enough. Oh, what a great war trap on Lin. Bye bye. Razor goes down. And the first tower of the game definitely claimed here by Cloud9. It's going to be a trade by LGD. They'll be looking to get the bottom tier 1, but they still haven't claimed the tier 2 in a 20 minute game. I think I think you're right. Cloud9 are doing a very good job splitting, splitting the pressure around the map and just. Oh, kind indeed. of classic Cloud9 Dota. I, the draft to me is just much more comfortable for Cloud9 than Game 2. Game 2 they picked heavy team fight, and they did pick a lineup that can go late, but it goes late in a very different way. Whereas this lineup just avoids fights, spreads the map, and, and then you look for Sing Sing to find the openings. Whether it's Murano, whether it's Ember, that's where he really excels. AUI does what he does best, Visage or Shadow Shaman. Split push, farm a lot, and stall. And I almost feel like Cloud9 are just in full, in full control of this game at this point. Even though it's close, when are LGD going to be able to group? We just haven't seen it yet. Do you just say screw it at some point and just five man down mid? You could do that if you have the uh, the Aegis, I think. The, the call here for LGD should be kill Roche, go bottom. I think bottom will be the easiest lane for them to siege and be ready to sacrifice, be ready to take the chance. You might sacrifice a tier two for a tier two, but then if you get the opening, you could go in for the racks. The longer you wait, the harder it gets. Sing Sing is now reaching a point when he's going to have slide of fist Dyer's leveled up. It's going to make the pushing that much attack. harder. And well, the Weaver who went for a greedy Midas build is starting to, to make progress. Envy's even going to go for Lincoln's, which surprises me a little bit here. There's nothing he really counters with it. There's a cask or Leech Seed. He could have perhaps gone for something a little more aggressive here so that they can kill the bear off. This game is slightly starting to have the feel for me of the Alliance versus Navi game, uh, where we saw Alliance went for the Naga, Navi went for a very strong mid-game centric AoE lineup, and even towards the late game, they could still win the team fights, but they just never got one. I think LGD with a proper overgrowth and split, at least for the next five to 10 minutes, should have team fight supremacy, but when are they gonna find a team fight? That remains, the question, and they're We've searching for the We've seen one split, right? In that, 21 minutes. You know you're playing well against a brew when you've seen one split the entire game and they're not taking towers. And they just say, let's go for it. Yeah. This is what they need to do. LGD have to get this Roshan. I'm sure they're going to get it for free because Cloud9, they can't claim a top tier one. Envy's being held away bottom by Lin on the Razor. So, good play by, by LGD here to get that. But again, the next step, where's it going to be? There's, not, there's now a Shiva's Guard on Doom, by the way, which I think is the, a great pickup by Bone7 in this game. They know what type of game it is. They know what their one weakness is that they need to overcome. And Shiva's is going to help with that high ground defense. Yeah, it makes the bear a lot less effective. And it's really, it makes him tankier as well. So the bear can't kill him quickly. Your Witch Doctor Death Ward is physical damage and won't be as effective in those fights either. And if this goes on long enough, it does get to the point where the panda falls off. It's Cloud9 a heavy single target once the Weaver gets farmed. And with that, they can focus down the panda aspects quite easily. For now though, they do take an Aegis. There's no trade in sight. But now they've got to find the next opening, whether it comes from kill or if it's just screw it, let's just start five manning. They have to find that moment where they can just start pushing for tier twos. They have an X on Brew now, so another big team fight upgrade coming the way of LGD. And BKB coming soon on the Razor, it looks. I'm wondering if they're waiting for that, or 
I don't even know if BKB is the right choice or if you should just go for a... Maybe it's a straight eggs. Go for the eggs here. Normally you'd well. go for the point booster, though. If he gets BKB and if he becomes a crucial target, they can just doom him. But you're right, if he uses, if he has used Eye of the Storm first, we've talked about this, he's not really the best doom. Oh, they, they find the Earthshaker mid and Pi's overextended. This is a pretty crucial kill. If they find Pi, they're already grouped up mid. And immediately Cloud9, they've got to retaliate. They're going to need to push in top. They may make a go here on DD, but no, he's actually in Viz. So now they can push through with the bear. Assault Caress not too far off for, for Rabbit, and once he gets it, if you start giving up kills like that, you're losing a lot more than just a tier 2. Your base will be in jeopardy. Because he didn't cancel a TP oh, off. Here. He didn't go for it. He may be able to cancel Sing Sings if he's not careful about the retreat, but for now, the Siege. Sin. The Siege begins in earnest. And it's just with three heroes. Cloud9 know it's just three heroes, but they also know they can't deal with it. Like, even fighting into this with a four and three, I'm not even sure Cloud9 will come out on top if uh, if the Brewmaster split goes off. And now Bo's in a good Bo's position. waiting, though. he's hasted, and he dooms Yao immediately. There's no split for this one. He's out of the fight, but is there follow-up? The Fissure just fails to connect. He still chases, he blinks the wrong way, he gets mech'd up, and it looks like Yao is gonna live. Uh, oh, the War Trap failed for Maui. That's a big cooldown down. And it's not it's not a split pushing. This means LGD, they know the wards are down, and they know the Doom is down. You just go down this, you go for your first lane of Rax, I think, if you're LGD. Yeah, they have the Witch Doctor heal to keep them running here. It's a level 3 Witch Doctor heal, so heals quite a lot here. He's running out of mana, though. Mech is ready again in 24, and he is indeed going for BKB on the Razor. Do we have any Arcane Boots available just yet? No. So Witch Doctor needs to be a little careful here with his mana pool, but... These Fissure spams. Man, like this could be a crucial mistake from C9, what just happened here. They might be able to hold it. If there are any mistakes and LGD overextends, maybe they don't get off the split if there's a timely hex. The bear's gonna be the focus to start, and it is brought down fairly quickly. Not killed off just yet. There's still no much, not much damage on the tower, and in comes the panda split. They look for Bone 7. They're driving him back, but remember, he doesn't have Doom. Maybe not the most important target, while DDC gets focused on the backside of the fight. He's actually not even dying. Well, for now, the Doom is gonna live back to the well with him. DD held in position. The mech turns this fight. Sing Sing has got a remnant out. It's not really the best remnant, though. He doesn't have many where to go. Sing Sing's gonna drop. He's forced to buy back. They know they've got a hold serve for now. Lin caught up by the four. There's Fisher. a blink, a stop, an echo as well. And on top of that, a Shiva's guard. They lose the Aegis. It's four falling. The Aegis not gonna be enough. Can the bear finish the job? Rabbit gets caught. He comes back, not in true form, but in squishy, squishy form. And well, down he goes. What a, that, what a hold by Cloud9. That dive by LGD might just be the one mistake that they couldn't afford to make. They saw it. Like you they saw the opening, but they just forced it. Like you said, they, they dived so hard on a Doom. Who already used Doom? Like, he, his presence in the team fights, I think he even used his Shivas as well before they went on him. So, there's like no more pressure going to be coming out from this Doom. They were in position to start hitting the tower, and they start diving the tier 4s, trying to get the Doom, and then they didn't even get the kill. LGD are normally... I think if they're known for anything, it's just focusing on objectives. They don't generally chase for kills. They don't worry too much about anything except towers, Roche, and the base. And that was a rare moment where they lost their focus. That's the opening for Cloud9. Now your Lincolns is out, and 2300 gold as well on the Weaver. Sing Sing just knocked out his Battle Fury. They may lose Bone 7 here mid. No, doesn't look like there's enough follow-up. But they're getting big. The Shaman's almost got his eggs. And it gets to the point, once Weaver gets Deso and Shaman gets eggs, where as long as they don't waste the wards, they can just take two towers for the price of one, at best. I think this game is, is tipping Cloud9's way sent. Definitely is after it's that a slight fight, gold lead, but sure. I think strategically it's, it's yes. much in their favor. It's not so much about the grab, it's about the lack of momentum now for LGD. They lost so much from that fight. It's not just the heroes they lost that they got a bad trade, but they lost time. The Roche is very far away, so they can't go for the same kind of confidence push again with the, with the Lone Druid knowing he has two lives. At the same time, the split push from Cloud9 is going to get exponentially... Here they go. The smoke mid. They won Yao. They'll start it with the Shiva's Doom, and they do just barely clip him. This forces out everyone to TP. It's the whole damn squad from LGD. But they'll just make it out. They'll Yao. They'll keep him alive. Doom is cooling down, but this time's different. Doom's cooling down. You still have your wards, and there's pressure on the side lane. The top lane is pushing in, so I don't think this is the opening that it was earlier in the game. Yeah, these Master Open Wards are now going to be really scary to push into. Level 2 Master Open Wards with Ags. This is actually the single target damage that Cloud9 were lacking in the draft that they're starting to get now out of Aoi 2000. Deso's coming very soon as well. Weaver's got 3,400 gold. May want to save for buyback the Kiras. Well, they're going to go for it. You said it might not be the best time, but it might be 
the best chance they get in the next 10 minutes, to be honest. Yeah, do you want to wait longer? Do you want to let Weaver get two items? Then he just focuses the fair in a matter of seconds. Battle Fury on Singh, he just got the gold for it. Another big pickup to help him just clear out here and hold the base. No doom. Let's see if LGD focus on the right objective. It's got to be the tier three. There's no trade. Everybody's sitting back. They'll stop the bear. They'll shiva it as well to slow down. He can't right click the tower for now, and it tries to run, but they just focus it. In comes Yao. Clap. Split. Now the wards drop. They actually are going to hold the earth pen in place, and they start cleaning up the pandas. It's only the earth pen to left. Oh, it's going to die. It's going to die. The split does nothing. LGD are rebuffed again. Then a fissure on the two, and let the turnaround begin in earnest for Cloud9. Well, is it enough? Maybe the witch duck is the real turn. He gets up the ult. The Arshaker just fails to cancel it. They force back Bone. They haven't lost too much, though. Their Weaver's healthy. He's on the side of the fight. Do they lose anything else? Doom escaping. Barely lives again. He makes it back to the well. Lin, not finished off, being healed up by two. Oh, it was a perfect death ward, but just wasn't quite enough. The Doom barely living, and now Sing Sing in pursuit. He finds two with the chains. Ah, they don't need to chase. Another good hold from Cloud9. Still the tier three kept alive, and hats off to AUI2000. That was a sensational ward trap. That was really, really good. But at the same time, the Brewmaster, a little bit of uh, uncertainty from LGD, I guess we could say, in that push. The moment the Brew jumps in is when the first bear was dying. It had like 200 health. So the, the moment they jump in and they use the split, they waste a lot of the potential of the ability because they have to run out the bear, resummon it, and get it in again. That's already three or four seconds down. And because of that lack of pressure from LGD, C9 were like, oh, great, three Brewmasters? Let's kill them all. And then when the bear came in, the Brew was already gone. So LGD, they have to execute better than that to pull it off. But again, very, very good holdout from Cloud9. They buy more time. Envy's going Maelstrom. Could you hear from the intonation in my voice that I did? <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not gonna doubt his item build. Like, I know he he's definitely thought about it. I'm just not I'm not following the reasoning of why he thinks this because it, it was just pretty push, obvious. I guess. I guess, yeah. For did split pushing, easily better than the Deso. But is that really the problem right now? I think they have enough split push. They want to be able to kill the bear in the base. I, I guess they're thinking, we already killed the bear fast top lane. Looks like we may have a go here on the Doom. They're going to start it off with a Leech Seed. The follow-up comes from the Witch Doctor. He does stomp and tries to run. And out comes the oh, Death Lord, but the Insta cancels. AUI's there again. He catches out one. Bone throws out the Doom, and they will retreat while in comes Envy. He looks for Lin. He's going to die for this. There's no overgrowth. He can commit a bit farther. Look for the kill. Can't quite find it. Backup is coming, but it's not really in time. Yeah, I, I, in Dota 1, this would have been a terrible item, right? Because it yeah. completely cancels uh, your passive from the Weaver, the Geminate attack. It definitely works. It's it's not that <laughs> he hasn't gone for an item that doesn't work on the hero. I, I think, I don't, like you said, I don't think they need more split push, but maybe it's okay. Our Shaker nearly finished off bottom lane by the Radiance Burn, but he will barely escape. And this is now Cloud Knight's ballgame. They control the map. They're the ones applying the pressure. And LGD are playing defense, and that's it. Uh, I don't think they have going for Maybe he's just going for records here. It's 0.1%, but it's enough. It secures a kill, and now they look for DDC. In comes Sing Sing, slicing, and getting close to another kill, another slice, and a zip away. He runs rings oh, around LGD. He gets rooted, now he's in trouble. He's oh, inside the tower range, but no root for Rabbit. Didn't press the entangle button. What a noob. <laughs> Good players always press that button. Yeah. It feels that way when you play against it, though. I know. They Dyer's always just press the entangle button in the attack. worst possible moment. But Unless unless it's Bulldog, then he presses it whenever it's going to guarantee a kill. What a player. He doesn't actually even press it. He just gets one on every hit. Yeah. Well, this is now this is now the kind of game that Claw and I were hoping for. When they Dyer's went for that early Midas and Weaver, let's just hold. LGD will make mistakes. We'll punish them. And then we still put them to death. And if we have to, at some point, we're going to have a Doom with a Refresher. He's going for Aghanims. He's got the gold for it. For now, saving for buyback. They'll be fighting 5v3. There's no Panda Split. You can even Doom the Spirit Bear if it's a problem. We saw that in the DK vs. Cloud9 series uh, at MLG Columbus, the near 100-minute game that DK eventually took. So, LGD, is this the point where they just drop Envy. down? Envy is going very, very deep here. What? Pure, purely Trying just force some TPs out. Yeah, purely just forcing TPs. And the thing is, LGD, with that failed mid push, they lost a lot of time. And look at how Cloud9 has put that time to use. 15,000 experience, 7,500 gold. And at least half of this is since they failed that push. They've been gaining so much now. That Another war trap. Again. It's again on the earth pin. How frustrating. He's just going to be locked here. He'll clean up the wards, though. And this will mean.
Sang. There's actually no split push for now. Oh, Sing Sing. They deny the tower, but can they follow this up? Where's his remnant? His remnant? Uh, don't know if he has one, actually. Yeah, he does. Across the ravine. And I was a boy. Well, it's going to be a Roche for LGD, but is it going to be enough? And then he's applying pressure top. top. He's already pushy in the lane. But if they get this, so what? What What is LGD going to do with this Aegis that they weren't able to do before? Like, to me, it may already be too late. And that's assuming they get it. Pi's already threatening to go in. Yeah, they will definitely get it here. But like you said, it's, we're reaching the point now when Roshan is actually not the not that big of a deal. It's more about whether LGD can actually reach the base or not. And even if they do, how much does the bear actually do this game? There's no BKB on the bear, which means it gets hexed, it can be entangled by the searing chains, it can be focused as DD gets picked up bottom lane. That was without a dupe. They'll now rotate in, Fissure coming through, does connect on two and, and allows Cloud9 to retreat safely. Yeah, I, I, this bear is just food. I don't know. Even if he gets a BKB, I mean, he could still just be... Soon you're going to have another damage item on the Weaver, and that's the point where it just melts. Did he get the Mjolnir? No. He got Maelstrom into MKB. That makes sense. He has the MKB now, actually. They could put Mjolnir on the Doom, but I don't really think... He's already scary enough when he jumps in. Yeah. He just got the Maelstrom as a casual way of... or Yeah. Only for the split push, just to put more pressure faster. So he doesn't want the Mjolnir because the, the value he gets out of that for, for that purpose is definitely not worth uh, the 2900 extra gold. So instead... He's going to be aiming for that MKB that he actually already has, if he wants to buy it, but then he doesn't have buyback. Okay, all in. Eternal Speaking of all in, mid lane. Eternal Envy's pushing through LGD's the top lane, though. Again. They don't have much time, and every slight is going to really just hurt that bear quite a bit. Stomp comes through from Bone, now he pops the Shiva's. Envy, though, is actually coming back. They want to engage on this one. The slight comes through, they get the chains on two, and now in comes Yao. He's got his ultimate available. They could no doom, actually, for 20 seconds, but soon it's ready. And it's just not enough, and now as they try to flee, MV jumps in, along with Sing Sing, another Fissure, that's on four! No follow-up, they're just baiting, buying time for the, the Doom to cool down, and it's nearly ready. I think the opportunity's lost here. LGD. I think they're going back, they're sending the bear back to heal up, because he wants to have two bears in the fight. So right now, they're waiting on resetting with the bear, they're healing everyone up again with the Witch Doctor. He's a really good pick right now for them. <laughs> Else that siege would have been over if they didn't have the Witch Doctor heal, but... Just buying time here. But now they have Doom. So if they get another 3-4 hero yeah. Fissure, they're going in. And LGD are getting wrecked. This is... I think a big Witch Doctor ult's going to be crucial here, Sind. It's going to be very difficult to get one off, but... I don't think they have the firepower otherwise to win this Looks fight. Looks like they're, they're changing their plan. They're going bottom. They think it's more likely that they'll get a chance down there. And Cloud9 immediately figure it out. They start split pushing again. Envy into the mid lane. He actually doesn't have a TP right now. So that's one thing Cloud9 needs to be a little bit, a little bit careful And now the smoke. With. Now the four hero smoke through the jungle. They're about to find the lone druid. They'll retreat. Not yet scouted out. The spirit bear's not going to reveal them. Only the heroes will. And Rabbit's actually walking in directly into the trap. They catch it with the slight, but they don't really want to engage here. They actually go on the bottom side. They isolate the Brewmaster. Now he gets stomped. The Aghanim's ultimate comes out from the Doom. And if he stays right... Now they'll never get a split. But Stone 7 driven back for the time being. The bear being focused. Everything thrown at. They lose the Aegis. Now Rabbit quickly melts. They've lost him. They still don't have a split. And the chase is on. Two hero slight. They connect. Coming in is Pylai dies well. He's got an Echo. He's just waiting for this BKB to end. DDC dealt with. And now Lin as well. They're getting run over. They've got to run. But where do you go? Even if you live on DD, what does it really matter? Well, for now he Dying's survives. They won't find any more. But that's easily a tower, and maybe even two towers here. The Aghanim's doom, it's just this panda can't do Dyer's anything. Even if he splits it, he just gets war trapped. <laughs> the panda is not useful at this point, Sin. And we're reaching the point now for Cloud9 when it's just... It's too much, I think. They just need to cruise and carry this one home. They've got all they need. They don't Dyer's even need to push the base. They just need to continue playing like they have for the last 20 minutes. If they do that for a little bit longer, LGD will be too far behind to have any Fissure ready, to, uh, blocks them away. Possibly could have let them up so they could go. And <laughs> we'll level death the Razor. Man, does that hurt or what? Oh, Pai just echoed! He airballs the Echo Slam, is this the opening? Now, Yao, he's gonna split, but Ember zips away. AUI into the trees, maybe they lose Bone, but that's not a terrible trade, considering the split was spent. And they also took a tier 2 mid during this time, so Bone will fall, I think. Oh, he's got Blake! He's got Blake! Can oh, he make no. it out? He blinks! He TPs! What a mess! They don't even get him! And now the push in mid. Oh, what a disaster for LGD. Cloud9 are just running raids around them. And that's with a whiffed echo. They just keep the mid lane in. The top lane's dealt with by AUI. And now Sing Sing's toying. He zips out, but he stalls beautifully. 
Yeah, this is not looking good for well. LGD. No, it's really looking very, very grim. 14,000 gold and oh, almost 25,000 experience the way of Cloud9. It's not just one-sided. It's actually really one-sided. They've got so much more out of the map at this point. Envy just continues to farm. He's already almost got his Daedalus in addition to the MKV he picked up what seems like five minutes ago. So, Well, what do you do if you're LGD? I, I, you pretty much missed your timing window. It's... I don't know. <laughs> That's I, a good question. I think they have to try to smoke. And if they smoke out and they get a really crucial pickup on a hero that doesn't have buyback, maybe they get a chance, but... Sadly... Who's that? All five of buyback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so much for your plans. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I don't maybe have they a better smoke, one. Maybe they smoke and they get five heroes, and then they can force five buybacks. Then they do it again, then they can force five. Wow, that's actually... That sounds like a great Brilliant plan. plan. I think they should do that. <laughs> Thank you, LD. <laughs> it's, if Cloud9 play this smart, though, LGD should never have that opening. No, right? exactly. Because they, they at least reserve buyback on the three cores. I think the Earthshaker especially, if he doesn't have buyback, but your other heroes do, it's okay. They will descend on top lane, though. Found Envy. Now they overgrowth him. He's got a time left, though, and he heads this other way. They now draw to cast, but they need more lockdown for this, and they just don't have it. Then the Fissure, the Doom comes through, and he dooms the tree, then stomps everyone! Bone 7! What a play! The backup's not there, but it's coming through. The Slight is unloaded, and Bone's gonna retreat out. Eternal Envy stands strong for the time beat. He's low, though. He doesn't have much left. Can they run him down? The cast will do it. They actually secure the kill. Now Yao going onto Bone 7. He claps him. He crits him. He gets thrown into boot, but Sing Sing's been left to full HP, and now he's gonna remnant away. He TP's out, can they get a badge? Can they get a rune? Can they get a thing? No, no chance. Uh, when you need the RNG sense. How the hell did LGD get an even trade in that? That was like a four, he stomped everything. It, was, it had to have been the Spirit Bear and at least three or four heroes. So they insta-killed the tree. They doomed the tree though, that's the yeah, one thing. They, they didn't doom the panda that They fight. forced the split and they completely reset. They were all out of the fight. I think they chose to run in and take the fight during the split. They could have actually just reset, just waited. Just kited? You think kited, they waited out? Kited, the moment the Bruce split ends, you turn around. And if, if all of LGD run back to base, then okay, successful skirmish. You killed a tree for nothing, you keep farming. A little bit of space given here to, uh, to LGD. That's like a, I wouldn't say a miracle fight for LGD, but unbelievably good. And yeah. what do they get off of that? Nothing, not a tower, not a Roche, not even a big gold lead. It, it just slightly dips. So uh, I think that kind of speaks to the state of the game right now. They need a lot more of that. Oh, well, maybe they find it. Uh, Pilot Die will blink away. We haven't really seen Cloud9 come online soon. The data list for Sing Sing's available if he wants to buy it. Eternal Envy is sitting on 2.6k gold. He probably saves for buyback, but he's even close then still to the next item. I imagine it'll be a data list from here. I don't, there's no need for a rapier when you're this far ahead. <laughs> EE, please, don't do it. But Maybe yeah, he wants they're, they're some in good uh, shape. compendium predictions. <laughs> <laughs> and they almost have refresher as well. Yeah, it's it's entering on, that, on, on the doom. It's entering that territory now where LGD these two for two trades are actually favoring them because they're so far behind. So they get more than Cloud Nine, but they need way more than that. They need an absolute. Like, a full team wipe is not even sufficient at this point. They need one or two of those, plus Roche. This is what happened. Maybe. It, it does go back to the draft, where LGD had this idea of, we can have a decent landing stage and then just start five many with the Brewmaster split in a blink, with the Radiance, with the early mech on the Razor, and we just overrun Cloud9 before they get big. But in order to achieve that, they drafted zero real lockdown for Weaver and for Ember. And Cloud9's idea was that we just stall the game. We split push, we force them to make mistakes, we trade with the Shadow Shaman wards, and just intelligent movement. The dive mid from LGD is still the it may biggest, come back to haunt them. The biggest thing in this game, actually, out of all, was that they chose to dive for the Doom, didn't kill him, and ended up losing four heroes plus an Aegis. If they would have played that differently and slow sieged, with the position they got themselves into, this game could have looked very differently right now. I think they could have perhaps got the Rex there, honestly. When you have a Witch Doctor to keep your team going and all the enemy team has is split uh, split damage, you can just keep running. They can keep it going for for pretty much an eternity while C9 try to harass them down. But You know the one thing they, that they did before against Mouse, which we haven't seen yet this game, I mentioned it very briefly during the draft, was putting a Hex on somebody. Razor? Maybe building towards one with this ultimate orb. Invisibility. Still Lincoln's on Weaver. It's not going to be easy, but this may be the one item that gives them a shot. Fight down the Razor, though. They oh, go to the fight, whoa, and Envy just melts him! Ah, not enough. 
Not enough for the kill, but Sing Sing wants more. He can zip in now, and he connects on the chain. It's on Lin, then Pi slams it home. There's your Echo Slam. Witch Doctor Alt uses the trade. The Doom's on the bear, and then comes the Shivas, and everyone gets driven back. Sing Sing marches forward, zips here and there, zips everywhere, slaps them down. And we're talking about hopes and dreams for LGD, but it was a win and a prayer, and Cloud9 just crushed those wings and those prayers. And here they go high ground. Yeah, they're gonna easily take two lanes here. There's not enough buybacks in LGD. The only buybacks they have have now been expended. I don't think Tree has one. No, he's 100 gold short. They're gonna lose two lanes. Oh, wait a second. Yao taking incredible amounts of damage. There's another Doom. That's a dieback from Lin. They can he's die dead. for this one. He's out of the game. Lin's done. He's 75 seconds on the sidelines. And Envy, he's feeling confident. He's going to the well, but really, it's all about objectives. With this game, Sin, it's looking like a Cloud9 win. They could take two lanes of racks off of this, possibly even three. Maybe they just start camping the well, they're so far ahead. They'll have a rematch. Envy doesn't okay. care. Yes, he will camp the well. And okay, that's one kill. Get out of my game, says What's Eternal that? Envy. Just call GG, LG. Get out. <laughs> Some say E.E. <laughs> e. right Sama. <laughs> Oh Some my call God. him that. Dyer's he wants to be the one forcing out the two letters here from LGD, but they're not he giving says, in. give me a GG, and if they won't give up, he'll make them kiss the boot, he says. Still, they, they slowly seed this. They could really use his damage on the melee racks, to be totally honest with you. But now he'll go for the tier 3 top lane Dyer's instead. Top they don't top actually finish two lanes of racks, but... Oh, they did it once. It feels they can wipe him again. Envy's pushing through the top while the Fissure comes through on the out. They'll be forced to split, and then Sing Sing just zips away. They didn't actually finish up the tier 3. Envy dropped low. Oh, he, he got the tower, sorry, but not the racks yet. And now he'll back. They may... Ember, does he have a spirit here? Sing Sing? Actually out of them for some time. He may even drop. He's carrying a gem and a 1200 gold bounty, practically. Pretty big loss. But still, they got the racks. Envy. And two more. It's exposed. Yeah, they could have got two lanes of racks there instead of doing a little a bit cocky of a for me to bounce in shenanigans. He's celebrating already, but strategically, the comeback for LGD is beyond difficult. As long as they die and don't buy back, I don't think they can actually lose this game. I think I think it requires a dieback on a couple of these core heroes. Well, Sin, assuming that they go on to win this game, they'll have that, that rematch with DK. I think the last time they played in a, a crucial tournament was actually at MLG. Is that right? Uh, oh, they, did they play WPC? I can't remember. When Cloud9 went oh, to the Oh, it's China. hard to keep track of. I, I actually don't remember. But that's, I think that's the match that stands out to everyone. They had the 100-minute game at MLG Columbus. And in the end, Cloud9 actually ended up winning. That was where they had Arteezy standing in. Uh, they, they had Sing Sing. Literally, I think he got dropped. He, his con he missed his connection from Baltimore and had to take a bus to Columbus, which is like a 12-hour bus ride for those not familiar with American geography. And then they still went on to win the whole damn tournament. After, what was it, an 0-6 one or close to it? It was a really bad day one. Arteezy said warm-up day, and, well, they've taken different paths, but both teams, EG and Cloud9, looking good here at TI4. Yeah, Cloud9 looking to take Roshan now. The one LGD actually wanted to go for. They're going to contest back. this. They have to kill Sing Sing. He doesn't have buyback. Neither does Aoi. Those are the two big kills for LGD, but the Roach is already gone. Yao jumps in. And now the Doom. It's under Rabbit, actually. Not under the Spirit Bear. And Bone 7 gets isolated. He gets off the second Doom, but he will die. They're holding Rabbit in position. AUI driven back. And actually, Razor doing good damage. Envy focusing on these Spirits. Nobody's pushing in the lanes right now. DDC. Doom wearing off. There's no Doom to keep this one going. It will end. And Echo Slam to the side of the fight. Gets stumped. They lose the Lone Druid. Now the Fizz are on two. Highlight Die is trying to, to twist the dagger. It's already been put in. Lin. On the run, a few more planks would finish the job. The static link's not enough. Sing Sing puts him out of his misery. And now they march down mid. They'll buy back a few more times here. And well, Rapier. The, the Rapier? Really? He only bought the Demon Edge. Envy. What an absolute this wuss. Is... Where's the Rapier? <laughs> Envy, if you're going to taunt them with a Rapier, you have to buy the Rapier. Not... Middle barracks Wait until the Throne's attack. dying to pick it up. Well, it won't come to that sin. They GG out. It's all over for LGD, but they still stay alive in the event. They go to the loser's bracket at Key Arena, and they will have a shot at redemption, but it will be a tough row. No second chances should they fall short there. At least in this year's format, all of the lower bracket is best of three. So it's not just one game that it comes down to for them every time, but it's one series. And whether that's a good or bad thing for LGD is actually a pretty good question. I'm not sure. I think they might have benefited more from best of ones. It's possible. In the end, I just I look at this draft and I just say, LGD could have won this. This was not an out draft. I think it was more than anything just that dive mid. 
Yeah. Well, with that being said, guys, uh, that's going to be my only game of the day, and I think Sin's done as well. So I'll have some Toby and Lumi coming on for the final series. And with that being said, Cloud9 move on. They play DK in a best of three as Bubble Race number one continues. Let's go back to the analyst desk, see what they think.